Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Teslaverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Tesla, and we're gonna be looking at the move that it's gone, gone through over the last several weeks. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel to see future Tesla videos. Please give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, you know, the last time we covered Tesla was a few weeks ago, and it was when we had just entered this, you know, overvaluation region that we had actually never entered before. So the first thing to note, if you haven't seen this, is the yellow line is our quote unquote fair value logarithmic regression fit of Tesla, trying to identify you know, what is say a fair value. Um, our green lines show our undervaluation band, and then our red lines show our overvaluation band. And the overvaluation band was made Obviously, back you know to to encompass these points right here, these three you know kind of mountains over here, um, and you can see most recently we actually went slightly above it for a very short period of time. Now, the first thing that I I, I would anticipate people asking would be, well, what about the stock split? You know, this this was you know I I, I basically got the price data. I went back and I just got the uh, you know got that price data for all those different times. It was just adjusted based on on the stock split, right? It was a five to one. So for every one Tesla stock you owned, you ended up getting five back. So it's a pretty easy adjustment. Um, but ultimately, the, re the regression fit, uh, you know, that that part of it stays the same. So you can see that, you know, these encompass these three moves here encompass this overvaluation region that we saw back in 2014, 2015, um, and even in some in 2013. And then we recently went above it again. And we're you know, the, the claim, right, is that this move here uh, is is essentially unprecedented and that it does seem, you know, to be significantly overvalued. Now, that doesn't mean that it can't continue to go up, right? We know that this is always a possibility, but you also have to recognize the risk involved uh, in purchasing Tesla when it's up so much in, in a very short period of time. Uh, one of the things we talked about in the last video was the risk level of Tesla, right? We we said, you know what, we, we, can, we can look at prior prices uh, prior volatility in time, come up with a risk metric to identify, uh, you know, times where it seems like the, the market is, is overvalued and to systematically take profits in those regions. So this is a risk metric. It goes from zero to one, uh, zero being historically the, the best time to buy Tesla. You can see, you know, at this point here, at this point here, and then one being, you know, when it when it's getting into this orangish red region, so between 0.8 and 1, it historically is, uh, you know, precedes a, a pretty sharp, uh, you know, correction in the short term. But then again, I mean, it's Tesla, so it does tend to tend to recover quite quickly. I'm a long term Tesla bull, of course, like I'm, I, I expect really great things out of Tesla over the next few decades. I certainly think that the prices of today, even even though they're overvalued right now, in 10 years from now, I imagine these prices will be, you know, um, something that people would wish for. Uh, but with that said, in the short term, there is a lot of risk, right? And we identified that high level of risk when we were up here a few weeks ago. Go back and watch the video. When we were nearing this region, we said, okay, all right, guys, we are more overvalued than we already have been. Um, we might expect a, a, a correction in the short term. And it seems like uh, there has been one. Now, if you take out the color and just plot it here on a uh, plot the risk, which is the orange line corresponding to the secondary y-axis, noting that the price of Tesla is on the primary y-axis on a logarithmic scale, which means each major tick to each major tick is 10x. It's a 10x move, right? So $10, $100, $1,000. Remember, there was that stock split. So we're, we've adjusted historical prices to account for that. Um, and then you can see that, you know, there were, if, if you go basically based on, on say, buying it very aggressively up to, say, 0.8, I'm pretty aggressive with with things like Tesla um, and anticipate holding it for a very long time. And I only really start selling it when the risk level gets above 0.8, as we've said for, for a long time now. Uh, so you can see that that's happened a few times back over here, back in 2013. We, we entered this region and you can see it proceeded uh, right before a pretty signif significant sell off. When it comes back into this less than 0.8 risk ban, right? Then I just start DCAing my buys again because again I'm a I'm a long-term Tesla bull. Um, for those of you that generally follow the channel and you you follow the the cryptocurrency stuff that I do, you know, buying at 0.8 uh, or, or less than 0.8 is a lot higher than I would do for crypto. 
But Tesla, you know, Tesla doesn't doesn't really have the same type of uh, price movements as, as cryptocurrency does. So it's completely different, uh, completely different ball game. And the same goes with the S and P five hundred, generally speaking. Um, so the idea, right, is is to is is when we get into these regions to take profits, right, and then if we if we come back down, it's just to reinvest those, right. So when we come back down into this region, you see the price came down. You reinvest because we came back into these buy regions. This is according to my own risk tolerance. And then when it goes back up, you know, you I, I would not have sold here, right? Because it, it did not reach that that new, you know, back to that point A risk level. So I just essentially just keep on buying, keep on buying, and then eventually, you know, we get back into that into that risk band of point eight or higher, which to me does trigger, you know, one of those um, uh, short term sells. In the hopes of, of buying back in, so you can see the the risk went up to between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, came back down to around 0.45, and then it it quickly went back up. So you can see that it reached one, which is basically the the highest level of risk it's ever been. It was more overvalued than it ever had been, and you can see we came straight back down to the 0.8 risk level, and it bounced off of it a little bit. So for now, you know, at these prices. Uh, I personally would not would not be buying Tesla. It doesn't mean it can't go up. I still own a significant amount of Tesla, um, but I would like to, for my own risk tolerance, right? I would like to see this come back down a little bit uh, before I would start purchasing again myself. Just because it seems like to me it's it's fairly, you know, I mean, it, the price has gone up, you know, an order of magnitude, right? Uh, in a very short period of time. So just don't don't lose focus of of like you know what's gone what what's happened in the last year. You know remember how 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 far it's come. Doesn't mean it can't go higher. Just recognize that the risk right now is is incredibly high. Um, so you know one of the one of the things I, I wanted to, to just show really quick or, or as a reminder is you know looking at it in trading view. A lot of you guys uh, prefer to look at it in trading view rather than say on my own chart. And you can see those you know, these, these general, some, some similarities, right, between this move here and then the move, so, so the move we saw in 2013 and then the current move, right? This one is, is even more pronounced, right? But I mean, essentially, there's a lot of similarities, right? We, we moved sideways for a while until we got into the green band or near it, right? We touched on it. And then we came up to the red band, we shot through it, we shot through this region up to the red band, right? Three peaks, and then sideways down to the green band, straight through it. I mean, yes, there was this correction in the short term, but more or less straight through it when you're when you're talking about the time frame of years, straight back up to the red band. Um, we had our first peak here in June. We came back down, um, and you might even consider this whole thing to just be one peak. But then we had, say, a second peak. If you if you want to call that a second peak, right? So comparing. You know, maybe if this one, these are, are further spread out and we can't, we, we don't really know until we uh, have a little bit more time. But if you say like first peak, second peak, third peak, and then say this one's a little bit more condensed, say first peak, second peak, and then maybe another third peak coming. But we're still in that overvaluation territory, right? We even came slightly above it for, for a couple of weeks. And, and now we've, we've dropped back down some. Um, so keep that in mind. I mean, you know, you, you take a measured move here from, you know, just from say, uh, June of 2019, so about a, a little over a year ago, right? And at the top, it was up 1,200%. So this is a pretty substantial move. Uh, you know, I, I I love Tesla, right? I own a lot of it, but I'm just saying, you know, be careful if you're buying it at these prices because it is it is fairly uh, fairly overvalued right now, in my opinion. Um, so let me know what you guys think. We do have the Telegram channel. Make sure you uh, join that. We also have the the YouTube channel. Oh, there was actually one other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, we have the YouTube channel. Of course, I meant to say, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. One of the things that I was looking at too, uh, which I mean, it, it's not really, I don't think it's that informative, right? But if you look at the 20 week moving average, uh, you can see some similarities as well. Um, but it is, it, there are there are some, some differences here, but you can see say this peak here, and then a drop below the 20 week, back up, back to the 20 week and then one final peak before basically moving sideways for a long time. So today you can see, okay, well we came up, again, it's not an exact match here, came back below the 20 week, back up, 
then back down. We haven't actually reached the 20 week yet. The 20 week currently is at 261.77, so a pretty substantial drop from where we currently are. But no, the 20 week moving average is moving up rather quickly. So, you know, give it a little bit of time and, and it's gonna be at $300 itself. So watch out for this, you know, if it does come down, if the price does come down, maybe look out for that 20 week moving average as a, as a potential support region. Uh, one of the things I also wanna show is the 50 week moving average. If you look at the 50 week, you can see that we didn't even touch it as support, but once we got to it in, in December of 20, uh, 2014, we broke through it and then that was essentially the end of this uh, amazing move. So in the future, it's not really something you need to worry about too much right now, but in the future, if you see us breaking the 50 week, which is currently at only 163, note it will continue to move up though because the price has been very bullish over the last few months. So the 50 week will continue to move up if you see us break it. Uh, it could signify you know, that things are gonna cool off for a while. But for now, uh, you know, if we, if we do come down, I would say again, look out for the 20 week moving average, which is currently at 261. Uh, and, and also, you know, if you, if you wanna follow the risk levels, make sure you, so, you, know, you subscribe to the channel. Uh, we actually have the premium list, okay? So we do the YouTube, we do the YouTube videos to show you guys the risk levels occasionally. If you want access to more frequent risk levels of Tesla, I'm going to be adding it to the risk dashboard, which generally focuses on cryptocurrency, but I'm going to be adding it to the risk dashboard um, uh, this weekend. So make sure you check out that. It's into the cryptoverse.com if you want, if you want to check out the premium list. It's mainly crypto, but we do a little bit of stock stuff too. Tesla's one of the stocks that I own, and I've been, you know, super uh, interested in Tesla for a long time, which is why we cover it. But let me know what you guys think about the content. Please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time.